Hey guys, we've got Tony and Shelly Narain, fast tracking to a million dollar income up there in New York and Connecticut. Appreciate uh, having you guys on today. You feeling strong? Yeah. Feeling good. Feeling good. So, Shelly, you had a question for me? What was that? Tell me again. The question I have for you, Mr. Rydell, I wanted to know, we have a lot of people in the hierarchy and we do all these five-star schools, but I want to know how can I double the attendance? Right. So we're going to talk about this. How to double your attendance. Right? At your... Uh, weekend schools, your training schools. Okay, tell me about this. Do you have a, uh, so you you do twice a year. Right, so we'll do like April and November for um, Empire Builders with Kitaro, which is the Empire Builders hierarchy. And mm -hmm. in between those times, we'll do a Super Saturday. April, November. Is that right? Oh, all right. So, and so then you pull it, have those in there, uh, the Super Saturdays are like one-day events? Right. They're on a, a Saturday, uh, a six, eight-hour event, usually in February or, or and September. Okay. And so these events, are these like three-day events, two-day events, or how long are those? The Fast Start School is a two-day event. So we go on a yeah. Friday from 12 to a uh, RVT meeting, uh, general session till 5. Then we crank up to 7 till about 11 with promotions, recognition, um, more trading. And then Saturday from 9 to 2. Well, you're, you're right to be concerned because if you uh, don't grow... You know, you're just spinning your wheels. You know, it's basically, you know, it's eventually it's going to shrink, right? It's, it's the old grow or die. And people have people that got their school up to 1,000, 500, 1,000, even 1,200. And then 10 years later, you look at their schools, they're at pretty much the same size. And how long have you guys had, you have about how many people showing up at these schools? We have about four to five hundred, and it's been like that for about the last three or four schools. Yeah. Has, has it ever been bigger than that? Um, no, I, actually, we've grown to that. Okay. So you've grown to that, and now the question is, how can you, like, really make this next one big, right? Okay. So let's talk about some ideas. that people, There's two techniques that, that come from maximizing your uh, attendance at the school. First of all, what do you guys do, just so I don't go over things you already know how to do, what do you do right now to sell tickets and to get people there, other than talk about it, remind them? We have each leader be responsible for a certain amount of tickets, right? Like like a division leader, say you're a division leader, you should not be getting no less than 10 tickets, right? And if you don't have 10 people now, you have two and a half months to get 10 people to, to go there. Right? Yeah. yeah we, we, we don't just sell them on buying a ticket. We have them getting for the team and reselling the tickets. So you sell the tickets with a uh, team approach, right? In blocks. And uh, when, did they, when did they buy those things? We started selling them already. Um, three months before. Right. So you sell them three months before. So you're doing the same thing, like if you say, okay, we have, first of all, the deal is, I would say, is you've got to, the, so the question is, how can you get this four to five hundred? You know, the main thing you do it is right, which is you're delegating. Uh, you're taking the team approach, okay? See, I like that. Rather than you being the only one concerned about it, you've got everybody concerned. You break it down. Rather than I'm going to bring 400, break it down where I have units that are going to bring. He's going to get 80. He's going to get 100. He's going to get 150. And so you break it down where you got a lot of people, a new person, they got 45. 
And so, and then they have it break it down underneath them. Now, this is the way that Andy Young, in the beginning, he would get uh, crowds to uh, Greensboro. You know, we would have these buses. They would bus down to Greensboro at our fast start schools from Washington, D.C., and a bus would have like 50 seats. And so what he would do, he'd break it down into five uh, 10 seat packages. And like you say, you know, it's like uh, he let people know, I mean, that was, you know, that was their obligation. That was their, if they're on the team, like you're saying, they're going to get, get things going here. But why, before I, you know, before I, you know, it looks like you're doing, you got that going. Uh, and so what happened was, then you can multiply that. You go from one bus, you fill up, once you fill up one bus, you go to the next bus, you get, you know, different people there, then you get the second bus, and then you get the, uh, the third bus. We got up to t where one of our schools, we had like 23 buses there, and most of them from Andy's hierarchy. So it's a way of multiplying. We did the same, I mean, he did the same thing, when we started trips to Atlanta in like 1992, we started going trips to Atlanta at the uh, month end. And we started with uh, 200 people going. And then 12 months later, we had, we, we, fight, we went at the end of every month and we would carry our business down to Atlanta. We called it a victory celebration. You know, we were going to take charge, get everybody, you know, have to ask people to, uh, you know, to make a special effort to go down for the day. And then we'd have, you know, we rented out the Atlanta Coliseum. And, and within 12 months, we were up to 4,000, over 4,000 people. And that's the compounding. All right, that completes part one. That gets us started with some quick ideas. We'll have more on part two.